Firstly, when we think about smart cities of the future, we often think about smart initiatives driving economic progress. What's the potential for smart technologies to address social issues like homelessness? Well, huge really. Like we use smart technologies often. We think that it's there to create economic value or to solve, you know, business problems. But it can just be easily applied to social problems. And um, in fact, we really need to do more of that. So um, we have some really great ambitions for our city about being low carbon future city, about being um, a smart city. But one of the things the Dunstan Foundation is working on is how could we be a functional zero homelessness free city. Um, and so technology will play a really important part in how can we achieve that. Uh, and you know, I was reflecting the other night when I was walking home, I live in the city, and I often see homeless people on their Wi-Fi, and they're the bigger users of the Wi-Fi network. So it's not that just because you're homeless doesn't mean you don't use technology. And so technology can play a role in helping connect to services and helping um, citizens to be part of the solution to ending homelessness. Because a lot of the time we think technology and we think homelessness, we might think, oh, how can we help homeless people but really, the best way to help a homeless person is to help them into a house uh, and to find sustainable long-term housing. Uh, and technology can play a role in that too. The official rough sleep account for the Adelaide CBD in May was 99 people. How does the Don Dunstan Foundation and its partners propose to use smart technologies to better understand and support these people? Well, I think data is really important. So 99 is a number, 120 is a number that's used. Sometimes it's been as low as 40. Um, has, but that number moves around and uh, it depends on what we're doing and to really deal with the challenge of homelessness you need to know who the people are that are homeless, you need to know them by name um, and you need really good data on them and so technology can help you collect that data, it can help you analyse that data and what we're trying to do at the Dunstan Foundation is take the approach that has been used in the US um, called the functional zero approach and bring that here to Adelaide and implement that. And so understanding who is homeless, what's driving that homelessness, how many people are moving in and out of the system at any point in time um, is really great key to how do we determine who those people are and what it is we can do to help them so that we can really end that homelessness. And so the functional approach to it uh, is, is what the US have really modelled and so the, the idea that we can end homelessness is a great goal but it's not going to happen straight away. Uh, it's like poverty, right? And there's different types of homelessness. So in the US they focus on veterans, in Adelaide we've decided we're going to focus on rough sleepers, people who are on the street. Uh, and so this functional zero approach is saying we want to make sure that at any given time, if there's 50 or 99 or whatever the number is, people who are homeless, we need to be able to know that the system can place that many people. Uh, and if the system is placing 99 people a month, and there's 99 people coming into the system per month, then you're on your way to achieving functional homelessness, functional zero homelessness. But it, it, it's complicated, so if you've got 99 people coming in and 99 people going out, you've still got a big problem with 99 people coming in. So you've got to reduce the number of people that are coming into the system as well. And so there's some research that we're doing at the moment about exactly how many is the number that you really ought to be able to reduce that down to. And we're, we're taking the expertise from the US because they've done this uh, and seven uh, cities across the US have achieved it. Uh, functional homelessness has been achieved for veterans and over a sustained period of time. So that's really the model we're trying to use and data and the analytics of that data is fundamentally part of it. In what ways can access to technology positively impact the lives of people who are homeless? Yeah, well, homeless people are just like everyone else. They, they want to be included in society. They want to, you know, you, you know, when you have a hard day, I go home and I watch TV and I watch some silly box set show or whatever, and it helps take my mind off things. The homeless people are no different. They, they need access to the world. They want to watch shows on television, you know, catch up on ABC iView, whatever it might be. But they also want to connect with their friends and they want to um, make connections with other human beings through social media. And um, technology is an important enabler for that. Uh, so that's just one example of how technology can help, um, really help with social inclusion. And, and literacy or the, the cost of access to technology and those sorts of things can be a real barrier, whether it's for homeless people or anyone else in our community. So um, in, ensuring that we can make sure that everyone gets to participate in all elements of life is, is fundamental to a fair society and to a fair city. Mm. Uh, and we have one of the most livable cities in the world. Uh, we think, at the Nunster Foundation, we think that to truly be the most livable city in the world, which we often hold ourselves out there and have been recognised for, we need to make sure that there is a place to live for those who are the most vulnerable in our mm. community as well.